So I've decided why don't I join every other dick on earth and start my wrestling channel. When you every other dick is fucking right, let's talk about wrestling, shall we? What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to, welcome to, I should say, AW All In 2024 predictions. Now, I was at All In last year, was it? Over there, I was behind the, where would I have been? Over here. There's me, can you see me? That's me there. It's me and Sam Land right there. Uh, I was here last year. At Wembley, as soon as Wembley tickets went up, by Jesus, I was there. I fucking got them again. I'll be going this year, but much like my WrestleMania predictions video, I'm going to call my shot too early. Now, it's definitely not as early as trying to predict WrestleMania a year out. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do it all in 2025 predictions a year out when I'm down in London. But for now, let's crack on with it. And this is my official card predictions for AW All In 2024, baby. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm just going to talk about every single championship. We're going to go through all them first. Then I'll talk about the non-title matches. And one non-EW championship I can see being defended on this show. Let me count how many matches I've got. I think it's roughly similar to how many matches we did get at All In last year. So I've got 11 matches on here. There's one more thing that I think could possibly also be added. Don't really have an idea of what that thing could be. Who it would be against. Who would be in the match. I just think there is a possibility we see one specific thing added to the show. And we'll get to that towards the end but up first we've got the match for the AEW World Championship this one this one is easy Swerve versus Osprey there is no need to overthink it Osprey leaves as the AEW World Champion I don't think he beats Roddy for the International Championship at double or nothing purely because would you not rather him lift his first title at Wembley like it's going to be his first loss and it's going to be a nightmare but some way to put some heat back on the UK someone to give the Undisputed Kingdom something to fucking do and not just be boring and it gives Osprey his big, big win at Wembley. Up next then for the AEW Women's World Championship, we finally get the blow-off to the story we're seeing right now. We have Tony Storm versus Mariah May. Mariah May, obviously from England. Tony Storm cut her teeth between England and Japan. This story's finally going to culminate at Wembley. Listen, geez, the boys were the boys were pretty fucking excited when Tony Storm walked through that curtain last year. And that's when Timeless Tony was only really beginning. She's had a full year to flesh this character out. I, I'm telling you now, Wembley is going to be rocking when Timeless Tony Storm walks out. And the exact same for Mariah May. I know you're probably thinking of someone else in the UK who should be in that match. And don't get me wrong, she's here. We'll speak about her in a wee minute. This one just makes sense. I think Tony runs through a couple more challengers and then at, you know, a show in front of 60,000 people because I think the cap's been reduced significantly because All In falls in between... Foo Fighters and Taylor Swift, or Taylor Swift and Foo Fighters, one of the two, and Wembley don't have to break down the whole big fucking stage again. And I think that's fair. I think losing Punk as well would have had an impact on tickets. I'm not saying they couldn't have shifted the eighty thousand. I think it would have been tougher to shift the eighty thousands without uh, a Punk. Sixty k though, doable as you can see by the way the tickets have sold. But I do think the Women's World Championship match, Mariah May will walk in as the challenger and defeat Timeless Tony Storm. I'm having both both titles change hands here. Uh, we shall see. I'm also throwing in a lot of predictions for the match. This is just mainly a card predictor video. Up next then for the TNT Championship, I have current and reigning champion Adam Copeland. He'll go in and he'll drop that title to the scapegoat Jack Perry. This is going to be a year on from when the scapegoat was born. This is a year on from Crimea River. This is a year on from, from Pepsi Phil putting him, in a, putting him in a headlock. This is a year on from that match with Hook. This is a year on from... All of that happening, you have to capitalise. In the same venue where it all happened, you have him win. Not the big one. It doesn't make sense to have Jack Perry in that world title match. But against a guy like Copeland, the guy who since he's came there has done nothing but help put over the young guys and want to work with the young guys. And then we have this guy whose character is just this entitled younger wrestler who doesn't care about the advice of anyone except for Matthew and Nicholas. Yeah, I think it just makes sense to have Cope drop the title here. That is a little bit longer than I would have expected him to hold the title, but when I thought about Perry beating a fucking beloved icon like Cope in Wembley, that make, just makes sense. And now to talk about the TBS Championship. This is one I don't have a winner picked out for. I can see one person winning. I can see the other person winning. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately this means Willow's TBS title reign in, in my head canon lasts until double or nothing because I think the TBS champion Mercedes Monet will defend against the hopefully returning Jamie Hayter. She's been out for a while. 
We keep hearing rumours that she's coming back soon. I truthfully don't know where Jamie Hayter is in terms of her recovery. And I never really want to speculate on recovery from an injury. Um, only reason I, I you know, was booking around a summer of punk in WWE is because his arm looked great over many a week. And he stopped wearing the brace now on TV. And I know I've made that before. <laughs> he stopped wearing a brace on TV. But I think his injury was very clearly coming to an end. He wouldn't have been on TV all the time if he wasn't comfortable enough to be on TV all the time. Uh, with Jamie Hayter, she's been out for a while. She's been out, uh, you know, coming up on a year now, I think. Maybe over a year. And, you know, I hope to see her back at, at Wembley. We She was missed severely at All In last year. And I think bring her back against another person who technically debuted at All In last year. Get her a Mercedes Monet. And let the two of them just fucking cook for that TBS championship. Also, I'm not... Yeah, it was over there. I'm not changing this. I'm just going to stay there um, because my mania prediction video was 40 minutes of unedited footage because I just keep going back and I'm like, Jade Cargill because my phone wouldn't connect up to it and I don't want to fight with it today. Maybe the next time I have specific things to show in the background but for now, you may look at that one singular image from Wembley at the start of Punk's entrance because I'm not over it. I'll never be over it. God bless Phil. Now let's talk about the AEW World Tag Team Championships. They are currently held by Matthew and Nicholas Jackson. And I think Matthew and Nicholas will retain these championships at double or nothing before entering a nice big summer feud that will hopefully pay off with them losing the titles to people who aren't even in the fucking company yet, baby. Yeah, we're booking around contracts that don't exist yet because the Motor City Machine Guns are going to dethrone the Young Bucks at Wembley. I hope. <laughs> I hope, I really hope. Because I want to see the more same Machine Guns wrestle live. They're my favourite team ever. Alex Shelley's my favourite wrestler ever. They have a lot of history. And I also think all the reports are pointing to the guns showing up. And they're going to be a big deal out the gate. Especially the tag division, which was some AEW was really prided itself on in the beginning. Has kind of waned a little bit recently, in my opinion anyway. What better way to re-establish some value than having the best tag team of all time in there? They've got two and three. They've got two and three in there. Let's get number one and two. And let's have them win the big ones in front of 60,000 people. And I'll be doing flips. That's a promise. <laughs> let's talk about the AEW International Championship. Now, there's a man. Technically, the first international champion. I mean, he was the All-Atlantic champion. We never held the international championship, if you want to be specific about it. But... He missed Wembley last year due to injury. I'm, of course, talking about the bastard. That was a bit more Yorkshire than I wanted it to be. Uh, we're not, we're not going to... We'll, I'll work it out for the next time I have to talk about Pac on this channel. Of course, talking about Pac. Pac missed Wembley this year. We cannot have Pac miss Wembley. Oh, sorry, he missed Wembley last year. We cannot have Pac miss Wembley this year. I think he will wrestle Roderick Strong for the International Championship. But I also think... We should have in the greatest international champion of all time. And to be honest, probably, I would say four. The fourth most important singles wrestler in the history of all elite wrestling. Behind Hangman Page, John Moxley and Brian Danielson. And one ahead of Kenny Omega in my book. Orange Cassidy. I think for the international championship, we will see Roddy defend against Pac and Orange Cassidy in an absolute fucking heater. And I realise I've got every single championship changing hands that I've spoke about so far. So, uh, let's... No, actually, no, no, no. No, no, no. Yeah, no, Pac can... Pac, well, let's give that to Pac. I think Pac would win that. If this occurs, I imagine Pac would walk out. So far, every title has changed hands. It's not a fucking case. I also know that All In's like all, all Out is like a week later, so I've got to save some stuff for that show. Not here, baby. We're doing every championship is up. And every championship has been fucking changed hands so far. But it won't all be like that. So, up next, the Continental Champion. The man himself, Kazuchika Okada, versus the returning Hangman Adam Page. Now, I've been thinking about the sort of the Team AEW versus the Elite thing that they're almost definitely building to. I don't think we've left enough time to do it at Double or Nothing, which I guess is like their flagship one. 
Do you do another stadium stampede here? Yes, I can see it. But that takes the Bucks, that takes Okada, that takes Perry, and that takes someone else out of... I mean, it could just be a 4-on-4, four four, but that takes someone out of a, a big match. Now, the more I've thought about it, the more it makes sense for Hangman to come back and align himself with the Elite. Especially if Team AEW is going to be fronted by Swerve, which, let's be honest, it probably will be. Why would Hangman go to bat for the company that have backed the man that broke into his house and threatened the safety of his child? Hangman is the most justified character in all of All Elite Wrestling. So I do like the idea that he comes back and joins the Elite for the big team AEW versus Team Elite thing. But this can just be friendly competition. This can be the Elite offering it up to, you know, the two big alpha dogs in the Elite now. I think this can just be a little bit of friendly competition. Okada and Hangman having a banger for a banger's sake. And Okada retains the Continental Championship. Because who beats him? realistically, who beats Okada? I think Okada should go undefeated for well over a year into his run. And then, you know, there's like one of three men. No, there's more than that. I think all the five men I mentioned is the most important singles wrestlers in, in the history of AEW. So, Omega, Mox, Hangman, Danielson, Cassidy. That's the five. And Kingston, six. Who I would agree is, who I would argue, sorry, that is the sixth most important man in the history of all elite wrestling. So I think one of those six will beat him, but I don't think it's going to be for a while. I imagine we have some fun elite, you know, friendly competition. Because I do think on a big team elite versus team AEW, in fact, maybe they do that at, at double or nothing. And that's when Hangman returns and sides with them because AEW have sided with the man who threatened his child's safety. I do think Hangman comes back and joins the Elite, but I do also think he's probably the only person that makes sense for a singles match with Okada at Wembley. Kenny's still going to be out. Mox is doing his thing, which we'll get to next. Cassidy doesn't feel he's in the right position to have a big match with Okada right now like he would have been a year ago. Hangman's just evergreen in the crowd's eyes. I mean, Osprey as well, Swerve as well, but they, they're in the main event here, aren't they? So yeah, I think Hangman is going to face Okada and get his head taken right off with a big old Rainmaker. So then for the Unified Trios Championships, I have the Don Callis family taking on the defending champs, Bullet Club Gold. The Don Callis family with Hobbs and Aussie Open. That's a great trio. They'll probably win because Will's going to win the main event. This one, I've just kind of thought of a trio that are good and like factions BCC don't make sense because uh, Mox and Danielson are doing something in my in my pitch here and that just means you need to add another member to the BCC and it's, if they do it'll become very apparent they're kind of just doing it to fill up a trios match so unfortunately a little spoily boy ahead that means uh, Claudio and Wheeler Utah will not be wrestling at Wembley this year sorry boys I couldn't find a place for you you know what you can do? You can wrestle whoever... You can wrestle the motorcycle machine guns at All Out. You can do that. There we go. We've added another match for another show. Let's go, baby. But yeah, I think Don Callis family versus Bullet Club Gold, that just kind of makes sense. I think with this becoming Will Ospreay's big crowning achievement, I think this is also going to be very soon where he turns on Callis, maybe Callis and... O Callis poisons Aussie Open against them. And then we can just have full-on babyface Will Ospreay with no ties to Don Callis, which I... I like him with, with Callus, but it doesn't make a lot of sense why, why he's acting the way he's acting, but the rest of the family are the rest of the family. So, yeah, I think the Don Callis family versus Bullet Club Gold, and this will be the beginning of the downfall of Don Callis family, even though I do think they probably win it here, I would imagine. I imagine they would win the Unified uh, Six Man and Trios Championships here. The final championship match that I think will be on this card is John Moxley's IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. I think Mox is going to defend that against one of four people. There's four people here. There's one that's not very likely because of his relationship with New Japan. Let's just get that out of the way. That's Shibata. I don't think New Japan would be overly excited about Shibata wrestling Mox for that championship on, on, on a show of this size. But... I can see it. I've also got down here Haruki Goto. Haruki Goto recently said he is owed the first match of 
uh, or he was owed the first defence of Mox's IWGP Championship because he beat him clean in the G1 a few years ago. I can see them kind of doing that. It's a match I would like, I just don't think it makes too much sense outside of Japan, but if New Japan really want the prestige of the IWGP built up and they want more say, I can imagine them pushing for a Goto to wrestle there. Uh, speaking of also someone from Japan who I like the idea of, but I think makes more sense in Japan, we've got a younger talent in uh, Yota Suji, who I think, pff, Jesus, Mox and Suji would be amazing. Imagine catching the Gene Blaster in a fucking paradigm shift. Pff, I've got myself moving Suji up my list here, but no, the one I would want to see the most, and the one that makes the most sense for Wembley, is Gabe Kidd. It's fucking, it's so obviously Gabe Kidd. It's so obviously Mox and Gabe Kidd in Wembley. Gabe Kidd is the most exciting thing about the Bullet Club in so long. The War Dogs, with the exception of David Finlay, because as far as I'm concerned, David Finlay's only made himself a War Dog because the War Dogs are popular. To me, the War Dogs is Drilla, Kid, um, the big dude, Tash, and uh, Clark Connors. I can't remember his fucking name. You know who I'm on about. There'll be a photo of him here. Uh, there it is. That's the photo of him right there with his name. Is it Alex Coughlin? Is it Alex Coughlin? I think it is. Um, um, a little bit all over the place. But I think the one that makes the most sense for this... Shibata would make the most sense, but with his relationship with New Japan over the past few years and the way it's kind of played out, I don't see it being Shibata. So I think you give it to Gabe Kidd. Kidd and Mox and the promos and he can wrestle Kingston again and keep wrestling Kingston. Oh. Get me it. So that is it for all the championship matches. Now, there's one match here I have. I think it's going to be the blow-off to a feud, but unfortunately, it's one that I feel in a place on the card. If it is here as a blow-off to a feud, you know, it won't be as big of a deal made of it. If they blew this feud off, you know, a couple of years ago, at the height of these boys' popularity, you know, it'd be fucking mental. But, uh, yeah. Chuck Taylor versus Trent. I think they're going to blow that off, that feud off there. Probably a big Trent win. So... Probably won't be involved, but it'd be great if she drove Chucky T out to the ring because she she's like to Trent. She's like, "Hey, you fucking you shot yourself out, boy." This is bad form. So she drives Chucky T to the ring, but I think we get Chucky T versus Trent at All In, and the final match of my All In twenty twenty four predictions card predictions lineup predictions whatever you want to call it. Let's not think too much about it. Brian Danielson versus Nigel McGuinness. Of course, it is. You can put this on in the main... If the main event didn't have Osprey in it, this could main event the show. This will probably open the show, give them 40 minutes, and let them cook. I'd go up the road after that and be like, Jesus, I know I spent, you know, 80 quid in these tickets, but I'm going to the hotel and I'm fucking lie down. That's how good this match could be. And with the way that Danielson is operating right now and, and McGinnis committed to getting back in good shape, allegedly you're hearing the rumours that he's stepping in the ring and stuff and doing some training and getting himself good net. You know, McGinnis can come back doing one match and then that be it. And have him go out on his terms against Danielson. There's no way he does all that talking shit on commentary from not to come back and wrestle Danielson at least once. And where better to do it than Wembley Stadium? Hello, it's me, Edit and Jake. You can tell for the big stupid headphones. Uh, I mentioned something else I thought was going to be on the car. Completely forgot to talk about it because I didn't write up my fucking notes like an idiot. I can see a world where the Ref Pro British Heavyweight Championship is defended at All In. I'm not entirely sure how we get to that. Probably still be Michael Oku. He's obviously got history with Osprey. He's doing a lot of stuff right now. I can see a world where that's defended on the card. That's just a little bit of, a, of an out of left field. That's not on my official, official card prediction. But I do think we see a world where that's defended on the card. Uh, although I did not mention it. So... Anyway, back to outro, Jake. So that's it for me today, then. These are my official all-in predictions. Let's lock them in. Let's fucking... There we go. It's locked in. I'll come back to this after Double or Nothing, because I think that's the only pay-per-view in between now and all-in. There might be... Oh, no, Forbidden Door is there, too. Probably be some other big shows between now and then. I'll come back to this after every big show or pay-per-view, and we'll see how my predictions have changed. We'll see if any of them have altered. Or if they've not changed at all. We'll go through these every uh, month or so until all in 2024 when I'm going to be in London. The time, mate. Bastard in life. Jesus. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Give this video a thumbs up and leave me a little comment what you think about the card. If you think anyone is a little bit too high up the card, if someone I forgot, I know I forgot Eddie Kingston, 
I'm so sorry. Don't hurt me. I love you. Once again, I just couldn't really think of a place here on the card. Uh, who else is missing? Hook's missing. Eddie Kingston or Hook? No story. Just give me that, okay? Jericho's off here. Hmm, I wonder why. Uh, <laughs> give me a, leave a comment what you think of this card. How you think the card is actually going to shape up. Let me know if you're going to All In. Uh, we can meet up for £19 pints. Uh, but no, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you soon.